go ahead and get started. So gosh, we are more than halfway through February, which is just every year it happens. It just goes faster and faster. I think the older you get, and the, those of you who are like in your twenties, man, the rest of us are like, oh, those were the good years. Cause everything didn't go quite as fast. It just gets faster in your thirties. I haven't hit my forties or fifties or sixties or seventies yet. So I don't know what that's like, but, um, I read this thing this morning. I'm going to read it to you because I really liked it. I am happy because I am grateful. I choose to be grateful. That gratitude allows me to be happy. So this morning, uh, hit your, go to your reaction button. And if you've got a shout out or you've got gratitude this morning for anyone in your world, uh, go ahead and click raise hand and Jaime, go ahead and start us off. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to give a shout out to Anthony Chambers. He's on our team. Uh, literally not even a week that he's been onboarded. He's been licensed for over 20 years. And whenever he came to place, he came in and he says, I want to join as a brand new agent. And I was like, man, that's the best thing you could possibly do. And um, he said that. And then he said, by the way, I have a listing coming up. So we have a listing going active today, not even a week after onboarding. So uh, that's for grit right there. Anthony, thank you so much. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's a great, very, very healthy mindset. Treat me like I'm a new agent. And in so many things, guys, we can be really good. And in other things, we might be brand new at something. And that is totally normal. Love it. Michaela, good morning. Michaela, where are you from? Hey, um, I am under Sarissa's team in um, BKT Dallas, and I just want to shout out two groups. First of all, our whole admin team, um, Casey Lee Davis, Reagan Lee, um, Samantha Green, and I'm missing somebody, maybe not. Um, they just are always super ready to do everything that we need. And, you know, if it's something small, if it's something big, they're always prepared to jump in and help. And then second little shout out is it is Chris Cotta's birthday today. He's one of our agents in Waxahachie. So if anyone wants to wish him a happy birthday, um, I don't know if he's on this morning, but um, yeah, happy birthday, Chris. I love it. I love it. Michaela, I love that you are here and that you are representing the ops department. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Rob Lenza, San Antonio. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, so I just needed to do a quick shout out to Brandon Ramirez. Um, he helped me, um, pretty much helped me by the hand walking, walking through a deal last week that we were hanging on by the skin of our teeth. And um, we ended up making it through, but um, he spent a lot of long hours. So for grit, teamwork, and then um, also, like I said, just a lot of deep gratitude for everything that he did for me. Right on, man. That's We've all been there, haven't we? We have all been there. It's hanging on by a thread, and, and that is the power of a team. Love that. Alicia, good morning. I'm going to talk loud on Andrew so I don't mess up. Okay. But I just wanted to um, say how grateful I am for my oldest baby. She turns six today. So just um, feeling a little bit older, but super grateful to have her in our life. I love that. I love that age. Uh, these are the fun ages. And uh, we have decided, uh, Alicia, that uh, the next time we go to Disney is is when we're going to have, you know, because we're going to, we're going to. We're trying, we're going to have two more kids. That's, that's our plan. And that's when they were like six or seven is when we're going to try to do this again. Cause this with my current kids, they're over it. So uh, we're going to have to figure out the next two days, what we're going to do. Cause they're not into this whole Disney universal thing. Uh, so happy birthday, uh, little stump baby, uh, that six now Daniel Weiser. Good morning. Morning. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Casey Carlson, our productivity coach here. Um, just always bringing tremendous value to the team. And uh, we have, as you know, we always find ourselves in really weird, unique situations with transactions. And man, it's like when I don't think he knows enough or um, um, he just gives more and more. So super appreciative. <laughs> right on. I, I, I appreciate that. And, and you know what? I bet that most of us, if we are put in a position where we have to or choose to serve others, there's always more, right? With your own clients, with, with the others around you, there's there's always more. We, we always can give more. Um, I love that. And Bart Cook can't talk at the moment, so I'll give the shout out for him. Katie on the Davis team made 650 dials and 81 connects in one day this week. Love that, Katie. Congratulations. Way to go on that. I've got two shout outs. Uh, 
if nobody else has shout outs, if something comes on your heart, just raise your hand. But I want to give a shout out to Joseph Madrid in Austin. Uh, three buyers that he signed in the last week from open houses, you guys, from open houses, a total of $1.5 million worth of buyer reps. So I think one of them already went pending. Uh, if you um, at some point wrote down open houses on your GPS and you were like, yeah, this year I'm going to do it. My one through five says I'm going to do it. And maybe, you know, like six, seven weeks into the year, maybe you haven't done it or maybe you haven't done it at the level you wanted to. I want you to know those buyers are out there in each of our markets, right? And we all say we're better face to face, don't we? And the second we get opportunities like open houses to do face to face, sometimes we don't do it. Um, Joseph, way to go. Three new buyers. One of them already I saw under contract. Beautiful job. And then the other one, Michaela kind of beat me to it, but I want to go ahead and um, piggyback on Michaela's shout out. Um, often our unsung heroes, which is our staff, they do um, like a hundred times more than you would even think behind the scenes. Like it's not even, it's none of our jobs to really know like how much gets done because we signed up for seamless, not for like stressful. And so um, here's what I do want to say to, to our staff from all of our teams, uh, all of our incomes, they benefit by having our staff. We don't have to start and stop a hundred times a day uh, to take care of administrative items. And for the most part, we get to focus on our clients and that's where our dollar per hour is the highest, right? And so uh, there's a saying, if you've never heard this before, you can write this down. There are tree shakers and jelly makers, tree shakers and jelly makers, right? And both are really important, right? The tree shakers shake the trees for the fruit to fall to the ground and the jelly makers turn that fruit into jelly, right? If you're in sales, you are a tree shaker, right? And if you stop shaking trees, there are no fruit that fall, right? And vice versa, if you shake trees and there's no help, right? And you gotta get down from the tree, you gotta make your own jelly, you gotta go up the tree, right? That is like a really fast path to not having any momentum in your business, right? Tree shakers and jelly makers are partners, right? And so thank you to our staff from all of our teams who make us more effective and efficient. They don't do everything for us, but they make us more effective and efficient. And our incomes are, are really brought to you by our staff and our own tree shaking. So um, let's switch gears. If nobody else has an amazing shout out, sounds like we're ready to go. So this morning, I want to, I want to talk to you guys about something uh, within our place family. Did you know we have over 700 uh, agents now? Some of you guys have been around when there was 10, 20, 50, 100, 150. There are over 700 talented agents in our company right now. And so among these agents, we have something I would consider icon agents, right? People who would never, ever say that about themselves because they'd be just embarrassed. Um, but folks who have uh, quite a bit of wisdom to share because they've had years and years of success. And here's what I would say about success, you might want to write this down. Success, yes, maybe you've put up big numbers. Yes, maybe you've made a lot of money. But there's three things that I think make up success in real estate. You have withstood decades of market shifts, right? Decades of market shifts. Like any market shift that any of us are feeling, it might be the first market shift or the second or the third. Some of us have gone through 30 market shifts or what feels like 30, right? Number two, they've maintained a reputation of integrity. A reputation of integrity, right? And number three, they have pulled people to the top with them. Going to the top by yourself, guys, that's a fast path of not feeling any purpose, not feeling any happiness or joy or fulfillment. Bringing people with you completely changes the game. So Charlotte Mabry uh, is one of those people. I have known Charlotte for about a decade. Uh, she doesn't, she did not know me. I knew her because she was always topping the charts of the Southeast region at Keller Williams, guys. So 11 years ago when I joined KW, I would see her name everywhere. And guess what? She is still topping charts, right? 11 years later, I was a little wee little agent baby and she was, she was at the top of her game, right? Um, when I reached out to place icon agents a few weeks ago, asking them, okay, well, what's your superpower? 
she said she'd like to speak on 30 ways to get a listing in any market. So my goal for us this morning is to be inspired to take action, inspired to take action. Why? Very different lifestyles come with each business choice we make. The lifestyle that comes with taking listings is by far the most leveraged and sustainable over time. So I wanna, I wanna just make sure that you guys understand the why. It's not because we're like just looking for another topic. It's because listings are sustainability. They're high leverage for you. So Charlotte, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spotlight you this morning. I'm sure, I don't know, in like however many years you've been doing this, you have been in the spotlight before. And we are so grateful for you this morning uh, joining us. I'm just going to watch the chat box. I'm going to let you take it over. And perhaps you can just start with what area you serve and maybe some history on you and then just take over and do what you want to do because we're here for it. Sounds great. Thank you so much. I, I'm just so tickled to be somewhere where I can say y'all and nobody laughs. So it's awesome. So thank you, Adelina. I, I'm very, very honored to be here. In a minute, I would love to share my screen. I've got a little bit of information to share with you. So uh, anyway, you. I will give you powers. Okay. Yes, I need powers. I, empower me this morning. I need this. I, I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I love to uh, visit with friends all across and uh, had an opportunity to join with Chris in the experiences world before we became place. And so what, how exciting to be a part of you guys' world. And uh, you're going to make my day. I can't wait to, uh, to, get, to get a chance to talk. Uh, I started selling real estate. Oh my gosh. 1986. So this is year 36 for me. And so I'm longer than you're most of you are old. So uh, I have six year old grandchildren. And so anyway, it, it gets better. It's it's okay, you can do it. But let's talk about listings. Who's having trouble getting a listing in today's market? Yeah, thanks, Adeline. You made me feel great. So thanks. But yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I understand when I'm the oldest living realtor in the room, I, I'm, I'm, I own that. I'm all about that. So we want to talk about listings today. This is a class that I've done. I typically do it in about an hour or an hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to do as fast of Southern speed talk as I can to today and squeeze it in. Uh, those of us in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where I am, we don't always talk that quickly. So I will do my best to speed it up. And uh, if I may share my screen here, let me get going here. And let's talk a little bit about uh, ways to that we can uh, look at ways that we can get listings. Can everybody see that? Okay. Um, right. Somebody thumbs up. Good. Okay. Awesome. Very good. So let's talk a little bit this morning about this. Um, again, I am in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and if you we are right on the Georgia border and Alabama as well. So all of my agents work both in Georgia and in Tennessee, and then uh, some. We have a few agents that also work in Alabama, so we're right in the corner, the southeast corner of of the state of Tennessee. So hello to Texas, and I'm so honored to be here today. It's gonna be awesome. My goal today is to stretch your brain, to go, okay, in my daily activities, am I missing an opportunity to get a listing because I didn't think about this weird, crazy way to go about it? So my goal today is to make you think, okay, is this an opportunity to get a listing? Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. In my 36 years, I've never found some new way to get a listing. Uh, even the fax machine, when it came along, um, you know, that didn't get me, you know, it doesn't matter what the technology is that came or went. Um, there's really nothing to, but thinking about it differently. That's what we want to talk about today. So we're going to dive right in. This is interactive. If you have a question, please shout, raise your hand, smoke screen, whatever, and, uh, and we'll run with it from there. So let's talk, first of all, about your business card. Now, this is something that I am working on right now with my own team. Um, can we make even something as simple as our business card be a seller magnet? One of the things we're working on right now is putting like a QR code or something on our business card that perhaps when someone scans that it goes straight to a video with testimonials from sellers. Uh, we're thinking everything we can, hey, maybe on our business card we need to say, hey, Instead of putting realtor, Charlotte Mabry realtor, maybe I should say seller advocate since 1986. 
Uh, can I change some wording on my business card that makes a seller want to talk with me? Uh, you know, getting sellers the top dollar since 1986, whatever. So we are um, doing our best to be creative with our business card. So stay tuned. We're working on that. My goal today is just to run some ideas past you. So hang on. Here we go. 60 to 65% of our closings last year came from our sphere of influence. And so we always ask our agents as they join our teams, I'm sure Adelina does this as well, that, hey, you need 200 people that you have a name, address, a email address, and a cell phone for. And that sphere of influence is your goal mine. Now, having done this as long as I have, we have several thousand people in our sphere of influence, but we at least have that list and constantly communicate and it's not just communication generic communication we're always looking for seller opportunities for example we send an item of value on a regular basis but we tailor it towards listing opportunities for example we are constantly updating our vendor list so we send our vendor list we try to do that at least twice a year if not four times a year and we, those are people when they ask for that or thank us for that, if they're doing remodeling or needing repairs, many times they are looking to sell. So we're asking, hey, uh, are you thinking of selling? It's a great opportunity for that con conversation. We are currently running right now a mortgage payment contest. Instead of doing some of the um, activities that we've done in the past with our sphere of influence, by the way, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today will cost some money. All of them are coverable by your vendor partners. And so uh, there are ways to zero base all of these activities. But we are doing a monthly mortgage payment contest. So for anyone in our sphere of influence or in our Facebook world that has bought a home from us in the past, each month this year, they can enter our contest and it's just strictly random drawing. Right now, I think we're up to about 50 people in the month of February that have already registered for this. And um, we will draw and pay up to $1,000 of someone's mortgage payment each month this year. So that's a give back to our sphere of influence. So each of the people we have a conversation with um, as they register, you're not selling, are you? <laughs> Can I help you sell? You need to sell, you know. So we're having all those conversations about being a seller with even in every contest that we do. So that's something fun that's going on right now. Client parties, I know you guys do these things. We've done ball games, movie nights, hamburgers, everything we do. But we are being purposeful in that we, any way to register, our questions are all about selling. Who do you know that's selling? Uh, can we help you with remodeling? Uh, anything that we can do to lead us into that conversation. So as we uh, work our way through the invites to these things, and as we manage all this in brevity, we're specifically saying, hey, you know, what do you, how can we help you with regards to selling? In farming a neighborhood, just some ideas that we've used in the past. So, again, some of these things are short-term, um, you know, instant gratification, some of these items will be the playing for the long game where you have to work a little bit. I'm sure you've worked a neighborhood, but something we've found good success is uh, having something called dumpster day. So at least once a year, if not twice a year in the neighborhoods we farm, we get dumpsters brought in. Typically this is good for spring or maybe if they're doing a garage sale and um, so we bring these dumpsters in, our team's there, we hand out coffee and help them put things to, in the dumpster. Many of these people are cleaning because they are moving. And so we're having those conversations just, hey, how can we help you move? Um, newsletters into the neighborhood, we sponsor those in our neighborhood. So again, we can stay up to date on who's moving and, and all of that. So just some quick ideas on farming a neighborhood. Now, YouTube right now, this is the way of the world today, right? Have I got ADD this morning? I do, don't I? I'm jumping around everywhere, so hang on. This is, this is adult ADD at its best. Um, YouTube is a great tool to look for listings right now. So many things that we are doing are seller-driven, information-driven. I send something to my sphere. I'll show you a copy of that in just a minute. At least twice a month. 
uh, video blogs that are all driven for sellers looking for sellers. But everything that we do on YouTube, we do our best to be an item of value for a seller. That way our team members can sell it. But if you are not involved in having your YouTube channel be as active as it can be, that's something you need to work on. Also podcasts, uh, it doesn't be, ha, just have to be Ben and Chris who do podcasts. You and I can do that as well. So we take all of our video things and pack it, repackage those into podcasts and push those out there as well. So again, just something to think about, keeping taking that same data and reusing it. Our video blog, for example, this is one that went out recently. I uh, have a company that does this for me. Again, it, these are covered and paid for by our vendors. Um, this is, uh, these are three mistakes that I see sellers make in today's market. So uh, they can watch our video. They can click on any of the links in the blog, take them to uh, newsletters, information about selling, handouts, all of that. So again, having some sort of video blog, video text or whatever has been a great tool for people to respond to potentially get listings. Instagram. Doing a story poll, we found this to be a good tool to get listing engagement as well. Hey, uh, I'm thinking about getting this house ready. Do you like the wood door or the red door? Uh, how would you, and, and many times people inquire, we get conversations going about, well, if you were going to sell, which would you choose? Have you thought about selling, right? So I'm sure you guys use Instagram, Facebook, and all of that, but um, you know, engaging our audience on that. We've got, we're pushing toward 10,000 people on our Facebook page and all. So we're doing our best to engage all of these people in, in all the ways, including Instagram. Uh, testimonials. This is so powerful. We have, um, and if we have time, I'll show you this, but we have a a quick little 30 second commercial that's getting ready to run on Facebook that are testimonials again, from sellers that have uh, worked with us to sell a house. So those we use in every media source that we can. Anyone that inquires in Brivity, we send these videos out to them as well. Uh, even if they inquire as a buyer, we send these out on the listing side of things as well. So uh, any sort of testimonials, we always want to get those at closing. Any way you can, video, 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 right? Do you guys, are you, Adeline, you probably talk about that some, but we uh no we haven't we haven't really done a whole lot with that so i love this because this is this is something that's i mean we've got iphones nowadays are so different from the stuff we used to have nokia's and black yeah. <laughs> i mean <laughs> well, we don't have to have a professional movie crew for this stuff not at all and i think it's actually better done with your iphone you know or whatever um it's just it's so, if, if people inquire about anything, I, I do my best to remind my team, hey, don't just text them back. Either get in front of your phone and do a quick video and send them a video text. It's so much more personable and video is the name of the game. So if you're not engaging in your YouTube channel or any of the things we're gonna talk about with video today, it makes such a difference, particularly when we're competing for those listings. Uh, it engages people, it gives you a leg up for sure. You can get sellers from open house. Adelina was talking about open house. We make sure we have that script down. Hey, uh, Mr. Open House and Mrs. Open House visitor, it's so nice to meet you. I find that people, when they come to open house, tend to be one of two people. They're either buyers that are desperate to find a house right now, or they're the sellers, the neighbors out there that, you know, they're thinking of selling, but they want to see what the neighbor's house looks like and what price they're getting. Uh, which one are you? Oh, you're a, you're one of the neighbors. Awesome. Hey, when you go in the kitchen, I've got a board set up in there that has all of the latest sales in the neighborhood. It's got a great report on the 10 things you have to do to get the most money for your home in this market. And it also has some great information on what buyers are looking for in homes today. Look at all those things. And as you sign in on my iPad here, I'm going to be sure you get all of our seller information sent to you. And if they come in and say, well, you know, I'm buying. Awesome. That's great. Let me ask you, do you have a house you need to sell? Check out our seller board. If not, when you go in the living room, we've got a board in there that has all other homes that are very similar to this that you might want to look at. 
And uh, we've got some great information from our lender partners on what you need to do to get pre-qualified. And we've got a great report on the five things you absolutely cannot do before you buy a house. And so check all those things out. And as you register in my Brevity iPad here, I'm going to send those things to you. So you can find those sellers in open house. So I'm like Adelina, we need to be out there getting those open houses going. Those are awesome. Facebook Live. Who does Facebook Live? Anybody besides me? I feel like I'm, you know, this is, I don't know, it's like a voyeur, right? I mean, we're always on camera doing something. I've done um, for about 13 years, up until this past year, I did live talk radio for our largest talk radio station here. And so I did a weekly show and it was good. It was great. I got a lot of business from that. But when I began to do Facebook Live while I was on the air on the radio, it was incredible the difference in the business. So how can we use Facebook Live for listings? To me, I, I'm on a listing appointment. Uh, when I get done, I ask the seller, hey, do you care if I go ahead and start marketing your house right now? And so I walk outside and go, oh my gosh, guys, I'm here at 123 Main Street and you got to see this house. It's wonderful. These great people have given us the opportunity to put this house on the market. And you got to see this chandelier. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And so we immediately begin to market the home and show our Facebook database that we are all about selling sellers homes in every creative way we can. Uh, if you are out uh, showing property, you should be able to get on there as well. Again, I get permission from the other agent and just say, hey, I'm out here showing 123 Main Street. Look at this swimming pool. This thing's amazing. Uh, if you are thinking of selling, we've got buyers for you right now. I'm out here looking. We need to talk with you. So I, Facebook Live is so useful for so many things. Uh, we use Facebook Live for testimonials as well. So we're at closing. Hey, we hop on Facebook Live. Hey, I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And, um, you know, it's been such a pleasure helping you sell your home. What's, what do you feel like is, is the thing that you could say that we did for you? And we do that Facebook Live. Now, not everybody will do it, but again, we're all about being out there live. Speaking of Facebook, our seller posts, what's your home worth? These are things you can do through our Brevity account. Uh, and these do work well. Again, all of these leads that come in, we would want to send them a video uh, text message back. Uh, again, uh, obviously all the things we do in Brevity are responding, but I love using video in addition to that as well. We are doing right now digital newsletters. We were typically doing those once a month. We are doing them once a week right now because we want people to know what's going on in our marketplace and the houses that we put on the market. As we have fewer listing opportunities, we want to make a big deal out of each one that we get. So we are sending this newsletter. Uh, we, along with that, will give them an opportunity to get one of our little handouts. Hey, get your home ready for summer. Get your home ready for winter. What do you need to think about in the fall when you sell? Whatever, you know, you've got, we can get all these things on the internet, right? If you Google real estate news, you can find hundreds of ideas of articles to send to people at any given time. So just Google real estate news. But these newsletter ideas, they are great. Uh, we put all of our listings in there. We send listing information, even if we're sending them to any brevity lead that's never mentioned about selling, they're getting anything and everything all about listing. Let's talk about our websites for a minute. You know, our Brevity websites are so wonderful, but they cater to people that are looking to purchase a home. They're wondering what's for sale, right? I've always thought, should we not have some sort of website presence or some way, maybe it's even just our Facebook page, that really loves on and caters to sellers. Because when a seller hops on a website or comes to your Facebook page, it's interesting to look at houses, but they may or may not be ready for that yet. They are looking at how do I get top dollar for my house? What do I need to do to get it ready? Um, you know, what is this agent going to do to market my home in the market out there? And so should we not be conscious, just like our business card, what does our website look like when they first hop on there? 
is there compelling information and verbiage on there and pictures that would make us think about being a seller? So just a thought there. What's a USP? Who, who, who knows what that is? Unique selling proposition? Yeah, unique selling proposition. So as we think about listings, and in a market where listings are a little tougher to come by, uh, it's I think it's ever more important for people to know what your unique selling proposition is. I think it helps you work your niche of wherever you would like to be. Maybe in Texas, you've got horse farms near you, and you are the horse farm person. that You enjoy that. You enjoy helping people sell those. Perhaps you should investigate um, maybe your marketing, the things you do on your Facebook or on your Brivity account or whatever that, that have to do with that. You label yourself the horse farm person. Or maybe you're near the lake, um, you know, or whatever, you know, maybe a lake opportunity. Um, in my world, for years, we've done the guaranteed sale. So uh, the guaranteed sale used to work really well prior to the seller's market that we're in because I would guarantee to sell someone's home always. And if I couldn't, I would buy it. Uh, and of course, in this market, you don't need a guarantee, right? They're selling. So we've switched a little bit of some of our unique selling propositions. But what does your sphere of influence say about you? Do they say, hey, you are, uh, Adelina was kind enough to say, uh, you know, I, that I've been out there a while and done things. What she was nicely saying was, I'm old as dirt, right? And so, uh, you know, but that's an advantage for me in my market because you know what? And there are a lot of newer people in my market that don't have that claim to fame. I'm going to use that to my advantage when it comes to working with sellers because very few people have the experience that I do. So my unique selling proposition might be, <laughs> I'm the oldest living real estate agent, but that gives me the opportunity to be your expert when it, I, nothing is new under the sun. Trust me, I've already seen it. So think about what makes you uniquely you and can you deliver that message in the time that you go up and down an elevator, you're meeting somebody, get it that succinct, that specific. Shoot, that's a whole class within itself. We offer all kinds of free reports, common mistakes sellers make. Again, we do that via our Facebook page, our live videos, my blog. I'm always giving things away on the blog. Uh, so always, always out there giving out free information. It's always tailored to sellers. Even though people are calling about buying, we're still asking those questions. Do you have a house to sell? Who do you know? Let me send you this thing just in case you come across somebody that's looking to sell. Do you guys have expired listings? Say yes. <laughs> yes and yes. You. We do, we do. Now they might not have expired this past year, but sometime over the past 10 years, there's been an expired listing in your market. I'm sure of that. And so we are going back five, six, seven years right now, calling, investigating, selling, you know, these expired listings from that time period. So that's nothing new under the sun, but don't forget about that. There are still expired listings that are out there. So for sale by owners in your market, this is something we're having good success with is this conversation right here, right now. These are 2021 NAR statistics right now. 93% of homes sold last year sold with a realtor. So 7% sold as a for sale by owner. So pardon my Southern English, them's not good odds, Mr. Seller, okay? Um, you know, 93% worked with a real estate professional. Here's why. The realtor made the seller an average of, get this, $58,000 more, that's 20, 2% more. You know, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, even if you paid me a 10% commission, you'd still make 12% more than you would have made as a for sale by owner. Let that think in. That's amazing. 22% more. And here's something I find really interesting. Only three out of every 100 for sale by owners sold to someone they did not know. What that means, Mr. And Mrs. For Sale by Owner, is, you know, you think that all these people are going to come along and you have all these opportunities to maybe get multiple offers on your home. 
97 of these for sale by owners out of that 100 sold it to Uncle Bob, to their cousin Bill, to their neighbor down the street. And they did that without ever meeting or talking to anyone else. What do you think happened to their price? It was good. It was awesome. But might it have been better had they had an opportunity to talk to those other 97 <laughs> I mean, you know, and get it out there in the market. These are great stats. We're having really good conversations right now with, for sale by owners, particularly that's, that statement of the 22% more. I mean, that overcomes any objection on commission right there for sure. Google, there's lots of things we can do with Google right now. A couple of things that really make our phone ring right now. On the right-hand side of the screen, this is Google Local Services. And so we got our sales Google certified. Uh, you can go through that process of getting yourself Google local services certified. And that pops up at the very top of the page ahead of all the people that have paid for everything. It pops up up top. And we get, we probably, when we initially started this about six months ago, our, our, the agents around us are catching on now. When we started this about six months ago, it probably tripled our phone calls overnight. So you pop up up there. Google's job, Google's life right now is to put Zillow out of business. They are targeting that and they don't want anyone to come to Zillow and excuse me, to Google and ever leave. And so this is all about Google. So Google AdWords using YouTube are all Google things that can really play off. We do target Google AdWords that are specifically seller driven. So again, in, in every opportunity, what we purchase, we are looking for the seller side of things as much as possible today. I know your questions, I'm not watching the chat. I'm sure they're there and I, I'm, I'm hustling through. So hopefully in a minute I can answer any of these questions for you. So write them down there. Uh, this is something that I'm we're doing next week, a, kind of a crazy thing. And I don't know if you have it in your market. Um, this is a at our convention center. Our Home Builders Association does this yearly. It is a home show where vendors come together that all have to do with new construction. And we've done this for six or eight years where um, uh, it's open house on steroids is what it is, right? It's an entire weekend at a convention center uh, being open house. In years past, we were the only real estate agents who did this. Um, the past few years prior to COVID, there were a few more. This year, we're the only real estate agent there again. Again, it's just coming back to life post COVID. We typically sell five to 10 listings over a year's time from doing this. Um, we try to be as creative as possible. This year, our set is going to look like a garage. So my Corvette will be parked in our garage there on the floor and uh, anything to do crazy stuff to get people to come and talk with you, right? So it will look like you're walking into a garage and we will be selling houses to go along with the garage there. So that's been a fun thing. We get a lot of business from that every year. I would say we get probably a 20 to one return on the dollars we spend on that. Community involvement. That is a great way to get listings, uh, being involved. We have a new partner as part of our team in her little town that's north of Chattanooga called Dayton, Tennessee. And she's very involved in the chamber and all the different things. In this small town, she is this small town because of her community involvement. And so she sold 150 homes last year by herself. Uh, prior to joining our team, the woman is a, 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 a fiend and crazy, right? So we're attempting to get her some life. But anyway, that's strictly from being involved in her community, charity work, volunteering, whatever it may be. This is a great opportunity to give back to your community. I know you guys do this. It's just, just a reminder. Something that really has paid off through the years for me is being involved with the news media. I have made an effort and worked a list within my brevity system of local news people, whether it's radio, television, whatever. And I make sure that I send them on a regular business, a regular uh, time, sorry, items of value that they can use as news stories. 
hey, here's what's happened in real estate, interest rates went up, all that sort of thing. Uh, by communicating with them, I got opportunities and I made sure they knew I would take this opportunity that if they needed a quick news item for the evening news, that I would cancel an appointment for them and come meet them anywhere to be interviewed to help them out. And so through the years, I've been able to do that. And again, having done talk radio and all the things we've done, people that I've worked that and that has produced so many listing opportunities because when people see you involved with news media, they think you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's awesome. And so um, it's been a great tool to build up some rapport with people because people think people on TV are cool, right? So there's your list of people to start working. Investors, obviously, that's a great tool to be thinking about to get listings. If you help them buy them and rehab them, hopefully you'll be able to sell them as well. And in our market, and I would think in Texas right now too, uh, doesn't everybody and their brother want to invest in Texas, right? And same thing in Tennessee. We, um, you know, no one in Tennessee has a Tennessee license plate. It's everything else, right? So everyone's moving here. So investors are afoot and they're a great source of listings as well. Knowing your numbers, that is so incredibly important when you are attempting to get a listing or competing with someone. If your days on the market are better than your marketplace, you need to be shouting that. If you get your sellers more money than the average bear, you need to be shouting that. Uh, all of this information, maybe you are uh, your own Facebook Live or you're on YouTube and you're talking about what you project or predict for the next six months in the market. People who are thinking of selling are looking for that information. So we need to be the providers of what we perspect, what we perceive the market to be like. So I know that's getting the crystal ball out a little bit, but hey, you know, we, we, we have the access to the information, right? So it gives us an opportunity to get out there in front. New construction is a great way to be out there and get listings. Uh, many of our, most in our market, we don't have the great big track builders. Ours are mom and pop builders here, and they're all married to a real estate agent. So getting a listing that way is typically not something that works for us. But we do open houses whenever we're allowed to. It's a great tool to meet sellers because everybody who's coming to look at new construction has a what to sell. Another house, right? So there's a great way to farm for sellers is by doing an open house and new construction. Also, we offer to sit in a model home for someone, maybe during the week, because people who are thinking of selling, they're out looking at what they might want to buy when they do move. We also target neighborhoods. Maybe there's a new hot subdivision. We say, hey, what if we send a postcard into a move up neighborhood? In our area, people tend to double their price range when they move up. So if they're going to buy a $500,000 house, let's say this new construction neighborhood in your area is cheap, but in our area, 500,000, that's a, that's a pretty decent house. So a $500,000 home, they're most likely going to sell a $250,000 property. So with permission, we will take a postcard, advertise that, that home, that new construction home, and put it out, send it out into neighborhoods that most likely might move up into this new construction area. Then we circle prospect behind that postcard going, hey, did you see that there? And by the way, I'll buy your house if you buy that one. There's conversations about guaranteed sale we can have in there. And we'll, we, if you want more on that, I can get you that as well. I've also worked with builders before where we said, hey, the, everybody that's gonna come along has a house to sell. Why don't you and I partner together to purchase this house? They don't even have to worry about putting it on the market. You and I will rehab it if we need to, and we'll flip it back out there together as partners to sell the house. In the meantime, we've got you a buyer for your product. That's worked really well as well. Referral agent friends, hey friends, I'm here today to get you in my list. So, and you want me and yours, we want to help each other. This is a great tool to get sellers as well. Everything you can do to work your referral database is a must. So that's just something uh, to think about for those of you that are on the ground there in uh, Orlando today too. So 
Real estate seminars, we've had good success with this as well. Who I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, I'm almost done. Uh, real estate seminars, we've invited um, whether it's uh, sellers that, you know, it's, it's seminars about selling, things to know about selling. I tell you something that's been most, most effective is investors. We've done investor seminars. So we've uh, had our vendors help us have a nice dinner at a golf and country club. People come for that, obviously. And uh, we have um, maybe uh, I'm talking about investing in residential real estate. We might have a commercial real estate agent there to talk about commercial real estate. We might get a 1031 attorney to come and explain the process of that. We would have maybe an accountant come and talk about what do you need to do to set up your LLC or, or from the accounting purposes of investing in real estate. We have We've gotten hundreds of names of in potential investors, people who want to be that. And then we've set up our list to begin working our sellers from these investors that will buy and flip these properties. So seminars, uh, in a flip and invest seminar. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. Your vendors will help pay for that. And you can help have, if you don't want to talk the whole time, you can get guests to come. And that's been a wonderful tool to drive listings. Buyer leads right now, I mentioned this earlier and everybody's nodding, yeah, every buyer right now is already a seller, right? I mean, the vast majority of our buyers are in that parking lot. They, they don't want to move out of the parking lot because they can't find a house to buy. So all of our buyer leads are sellers. We need to begin really having these conversations. We are going to all of our buyer leads and saying, hey, we have a program now where we can put your home on the market. We will just say, you're not moving until you find what you need. People, we're finding that people are willing to wait on that. They will buy something, wait two, five, 10 months to be able to move into it, uh, to be able to lock in these lower interest rates. So those are things we're going now to our buyer leads, particularly in Brivity and, and looking with all of that. Last couple of things, I don't want to end on a sour note here, but just thinking about other opportunities to find leads, a divorce attorney, a probate attorney, uh, any of those connections that you might have out there where they are working with people in the public, there's all sorts of listing opportunities. We've got particularly a probate attorney that sends us tons of listing opportunities right now and uh, working that market of uh, people that are selling estate properties. So again, that's just another, another way, another opportunity to follow along there. So I have very quickly, <laughs> way too quickly, without even giving you an opportunity to respond, thrown a lot of ideas at you of different ways that you can uh, be creative to get listing or to at least talk about a listing as you converse with anyone. Now, what questions might I answer? Um, you know, anything at all that you can, um, that I can pass on or, or answer or anything for you? I would love for people to go to their reaction button and just raise your hand and we will get going. Um, and as people do that, I got an email from someone uh, who said, you are the Paula Dean of real estate. <laughs> And we love that. Uh, and uh, I love it. If only I was as, as wealthy as she is. So there we go. You, you are well on your way. Congratulations on that Corvette. Uh, uh, you just got it, right? Like within the I last did. year. I, I had been looking for one. I had another one and had sold it. And so um, Jay, uh, Jason Abrams, I was a coaching client. And so um, Jason is now, I guess he's a vice president as it were, or whatever you want to call him with uh with Keller Williams. And so he lovingly calls me his gray hair friend that drives a Corvette. So uh, I, I'm you know. all about it. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Daniel Moore, you're up. I want to see if maybe you have some more information and I'd be happy even if it's an email or something, more information on the, uh, I just lost my train of thought, the, uh, the road shows, the, oh. the, the, 
the that you'd have oh, like no. a convention center. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is it's again just something that our, our home builders association. So you might reach out to a local home builders association. And it's become there's probably a hundred vendors at this. It's it's in a convention center and um, swimming pools, roofing. Uh, builders, uh, you know, everything that has to do with it. So all the people that are coming are either remodeling and many of them are remodeling because they're going to sell. So we are just there. It's, it's meet and greet. Just think open house, but open house for a really long weekend. <laughs> I love that. And the only thing I would add, Daniel, is um, just Google like home shows in Dallas or DFW or love any that. of your like pocket areas um, there. I mean, I'm not familiar enough over there. Fort Worth, Arlington, Plano. I bet you they probably every little city around you has them. And then okay. another one to add to your list might be um, uh, wedding shows, right? Like sometimes, sometimes. Uh, I've done them twice. They were okay. Yeah. It just depends on, I would start with the home shows. Yeah. Or well, you get buyers at the wedding show. Bingo. And That's the only thing that I was going to say. You're so correct on that. So correct on that. Um, perfect. Ooh, I lost my other hand. I don't know where you went, but I lost you wherever it went. Oh, it's Brad. I was, um, I was just going to ask basically the same question, um, but I was just going to um, ask how like you, schedule your agents and just run them through and everybody um, takes a little little time from the whole weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. It just runs a schedule, just like a floor duty schedule, as it were. And so uh, they're on duty there. And anyone that they meet, it's their client uh, opportunity. So uh, all of our information, we, get, we do a giveaway like this year because we're doing the garage. We're giving away a big craftsman rolling tool bench. And so everyone to register for that runs the gauntlet of finding out about, um, you know, what, if they're selling their home and all of that. So. Okay. I, just, I love it. Thank amazing. you. That's amazing. I love it. Anthony. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Charlotte. Thank you for all these golden nuggets. It's really much appreciated. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Question. Oh, thank you. Uh, personal development. Um, could you talk more about your mindset and what got you to where you are now and maybe throw a book or two in there that you've read? You're going to put me on the spot there, Anthony. <laughs> I appreciate that. Awesome. You know, mindset is, um, you know, I, my thought, I guess on mindset, I'm just, I want to say that the best thing for you is don't, don't be afraid to be creative. You know, sometimes we get so hung up on doing everything the same way and don't don't have don't forget to have a little fun. I do think part of getting clients and getting business is being don't be afraid to have a little fun. You know, one of the uh, I'm not I haven't been in production for several years, but the listing appointments I'll occasionally go on and they always say, you know, hey, what? Uh, so what's your commission amount? I go 25 percent. And, and, and they're like, yeah, and so I mean, yeah, and, and say, so doesn't, doesn't 7% sound better? <laughs> I mean, so we're having, we have a good time, you know, so don't be afraid to have fun. Uh, and, you know, sometimes things don't work. Um, but from a mindset perspective, just know, guys, there's nobody better at this than you are. I mean, if you're in Adelina's world, and we are all in places world, we have this secret advantage not so secret anymore, but we have this unfair advantage that, I mean, we have so many tools and systems and models to fall, follow, excuse me. It just doesn't get any better than that. And I, I think we're so fortunate. If from a book list standpoint, um, you know, there are so many, huh, let me look at my, um, look for a second at my Kindle right here. Let's see, I'll, I'll recommend something. I tell you what, if you're if you're thinking about finances and wealth building, Tony Robbins book, Mas Money, Master the Game, that is a great book on just finances. So if you want to look at that, um, that's a great book. Um, let me look in my library as well. Oh, Damon John, who's on um, Shark Tank, The Power of Broke. That is an, any of his books are great, Anthony. He's such a, it's so engaging to read his story about how he started his company. And so those are great books to read as well. Um, 
Brian Tracy's Million Dollar Habits, Andy Stanley, anything that Andy Stanley does, visionary, any of his things. I love Andy Stanley. And I tell you what, I was listening yesterday to Lucas Sheraden. Uh, have you w watched any of his YouTube stuff? Oh my gosh, he's part of our network. He's amazing. So just listen to him. Did that, did that help anything? I hope so. Awesome. I love that. I love that. And, and Lucas is, um, you guys will remember Lucas, if you've been here uh, for about a year or so, he was he was our resident preacher, right? Turned a uh, real estate mogul, right? Uh, it's just an amazing story. We might have to awesome. have him back, Charlotte. Thanks for the reminder there. He's awesome. He's awesome. I love that. Daniel Weiser. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, those are all incredible ideas. I guess my question for you is I would love some advice on which top three you would suggest um, someone to enact like immediately. Uh, what top three you think would be probably the most effective? Of course, as we uh, slowly, it would be awesome to integrate all of them, but uh, I have like an action step for your top three. Great, great question. Great question, Daniel. I would say for immediate return, it would be open houses. Just change your mindset that everybody that comes in open house is a source of listings. Yeah, you're going to get a buyer, but you know, I, right now we're, we, we're, we're happy to get the buyers, but we want the listing. So I would really focus on everything you do from when they come in to be sure to send them listing information. So open house would be something very easy to do. Um, something a little more long-term is working that neighborhood. If you have a neighborhood that you farm, it takes about six months to really work that. But right now that's what we've got to do. We've got to dig the trenches and be in those trenches in those neighborhoods. So I would really look at farming neighborhood. And then again, for just instant gratification is this uh, home show thing. That's That's, been a great return for us. Awesome. But let me add, let me add a fourth before I forget about it. Old people are slow people. Sorry, it takes me a minute to think about that. Um, but Facebook, I mean, anything you can do on Facebook Live or with video on Facebook, that is a great way to tell people what you do, both subtly and not so subtly, right? Of just saying, hey, I'm you know, you, you, I'm in this business and I need to sell your house. So just doing all of the activities, open house, be on Facebook live at the home show, be on Facebook live. If you're walking the neighborhood, you're door knocking, you're at, you're sitting at your office prospecting, flip on Facebook live. Here's what I'm doing today and why I'm doing it. That's a great uh, overarching resource for all of that. Oh, uh, Charlotte, piggyback on that just real quick, because people hear any sort of video and not everybody is this big personality. Not everybody is super comfortable uh, getting on video, right? Like, can you speak to that? Like, I know we're salespeople. We're supposed to be salespeople. And sometimes we confuse sales with customer service, right? And, and customer service is really important once you have someone to service. Until you have someone to service, you got to do your part with sales any mindset or, or I love thoughts that. from uh, this? Actually, I think it's an advantage if you're a little timid to do that because people respect honesty and they should. And I think if you get on camera and go, you know what? Adelina is making me do this. I, I didn't really want to get on here, but you know, here we go. And you know, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm so excited to talk about this listing and, and I'm getting out of my comfort zone. I think people appreciate that. And I, I think sometimes we can be too polished. Like you see some things on there and my, you know, it's hard to sell a salesman, right? So I get a little thrown by people that are too polished. So don't think anything of it, but I will tell you, I mean, look, scroll through your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok, whatever, there's nothing but video on there. If we don't get in the video world, we will no longer be in the world. So uh, I think you've got to get outside your comfort zone, practice it, what, go on YouTube and watch. Some of these people, trust me, <laughs> they're terrible, but they're selling houses. So I, I think it's less, over time, you'll get better at it. But guess what, guys? We've been using Zoom. That's half the battle. If you can get on Zoom, and, and make Zoom work, trust me, you got it, so. I love that. Relatable is real, real. Yeah, love health, it, I love right? it. That's awesome. And I love that. And uh, the only thing that I would end with is um, oftentimes when it comes to video or anything or any new ideas or anything that, you know, we said we were gonna do, but we didn't take action on in the past, um, 
we, we, we say with lead generation, it's, it's consistency versus intensity, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. So, so oftentimes with video, we'll wait for that good hair day. We'll wait for when we <laughs> finally have like a crew or whatever. Right. And we're missing all the opportunities to be consistent and build our following now and build our, really our network, um, digging the trenches online digitally, dig, digging the trenches, um, with adding more people to our database that are sellers. Right. Uh, I love, love, love this conversation as we jump off guys, uh, put in chat, what, how are you cementing this today? How are you cementing this today? What's your one thing that you will take action on? Just think about it for a second. One thing that you wrote down that you want to take action on. If you don't cement it, this was just another source of entertainment and Charlotte was entertaining, um, but it doesn't make us any money to just be entertained. Absolutely. What is that one thing for you? What's that one thing? And Adeline, I will send you this slide deck so you can have it as a reference. Okay. It's for, for I love that. I love that. And man, do we appreciate you. Uh, Charlotte, would you put your contact information in sure. our uh, chat? And I know some of you guys were wanting to be added to Charlotte's newsletter. Perhaps, uh, perhaps sure. her assistant could add you. Uh, and if you could email Charlotte, I'm sure she can forward that over to her assistant and have you added. Uh, so that you could see, you know, and I put the Facebook links that she already uh, has. I found those and I put those in chat. Um, but all you got to do is just Charlotte Mabry and you will find her all over Google, right? Because that's what she's been working on. Yeah, absolutely. So just just look for Chattanooga Real Estate Agents and you'll see us pop up. So I love it. Charlotte, you are the best. Thank you so oh, much, Miss uh, Paula oh, Dean of Real Estate. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to title it. <laughs> as that on YouTube. When this goes out, it's going to say the Paula Dean of real estate. Oh, this is great. This is great. Uh, we will see everyone next week, next Thursday. So have an awesome weekend. We are wrapping up the first quarter, which sounds kind of crazy because it's only in what February, I don't even know what day it is, February 17th. But remember everything that we penned this month, that's it. Because everything we panned in March is for the second quarter. So uh, definitely use your time purposefully, right? Nobody says be a workaholic. That is not the message. The message is follow that GPS. And if, if you have a lack of clarity with it, identify, okay, well, what are my seller activities that will get me into momentum? And who, when I check into Brivity dashboard, who, who needs my help? Who's already looking at houses as far as buyers? Who's already opening their market reports as far as sellers? You guys have an awesome time. Charlotte, from the bottom of our heart, thank you so much. Hey, thank time. you. You've made my day. Thanks. Bye. See you guys. Bye.